Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today I'm very, very excited to talk about some big news coming out of the LEC. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm recording this video on October 31st. This has been the most painful offseason, the most slow, the most painstaking, whatever word, uh, offseason we have had uh, really in my history of covering the LCS and LEC, which I think this is like my third offseason now. So it hasn't been that long, but you know, I was still a really, really close fan in like 2019, 2018. Uh, and these offseasons uh, usually go much quicker than this, but we finally got a big domino drop in today. We're talking about the future of Han Sama and where it's looking like he's going to be playing in 2023. But first, a word from today's sponsor, which is of course, uh, prize picks. This is daily fantasy made easy. Um, they are actually going to match the first deposit for new users up to a hundred dollars. If you guys check out the first link in the description below right now, it's a really, really awesome offer. Uh, and, and playing on prize picks, like they say, it's easy. It's very, very simple. They offer all kinds of different games, all kinds of different sports. They do traditional sports. They do esports. It's League of Legends. It's Valorant. It's, uh, you know, CSGO. It's all this different stuff. Whatever your thing is, whatever you follow closely, whatever you have a really, really huge knowledge base about, you can compete on prize picks with. And all you have to do is pick more or less on the selected props. Like for League of Legends esports, for instance, it's like kills and they'll give you a bunch of different players and you just have to pick more or less less than the number of kills they have selected. If you get a couple right, you can win some prizes. It's that simple. It's that easy. Check it out. Uh, and if you guys want to go over there today, start making some picks of your own. Check out the first link in the description below. Like I said, they're going to match your first deposit up to $100 and it helps support me, my channel, and my content. So thank you so much to them. Hopefully you guys check them out. With that being said, let's get right into this. This is the tweet that we're talking about today. I showed it a little bit too early at the beginning of the video, but this is it from LEC Wulu this morning, uh, October 31st, 2022, Halloween. Um, I don't know what actual time this was over in Europe, so maybe Wulu tweeted this out on the 30th his time, freaking November 1st. I don't know, but in the United States, this was really, really early in the morning for me on the East Coast, but like, yeah, for people in LA, this was like way, 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 way early. Um, but, you know, getting it, getting out to it the next day, I was at work, stuff like that, uh, you know, had already kind of gotten my day started, but sources... Han Sama is set to join G2 Esports, and there's so many, like, fake accounts and rumors and all this stuff going around. You know, I had to check in. I'd be like, hold up. Is this the real Wulu? Is this thing really going on? Is this thing really happening? And yes, here it is, our 200,000 follower friend. You know, he doesn't have the, the check mark, not in, not Twitter verified or whatever. Uh, apparently, you're going to start paying for that sometime soon or something. I don't even know, but... This is the very, very big news. And also, if we check out LEC Wulu's Instagram, we can see, you know, he's been saying for the past two weeks that Han Sama is one of the big dominoes, really, really holding up things. Um, I don't know if this is in the LEC and the LCS offseason, but especially in the LEC offseason. Um, and I think one of the biggest reasons for that was maybe he just wasn't totally sure. Maybe he had a bunch of really, really compelling offers. Maybe he was really mulling some stuff over or trying to use teams against each other to milk them out of more money or better opportunities or better clauses in his contract or whatever. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, another possibility as well is that he just really, really wanted to go to K-Corp because that's kind of the original uh, rumor that Wulu had put out that, hey, he was trying to make his way to K-Corp. You know, if K-Corp does make it in the LEC, Hansama's probably going to be their AD carry. They're going to be moving on from Reckless, all of this. And K-Corp just kept holding out, kept holding out, kept holding out, trying to get in the LEC, trying to get in the LEC, trying to get in the LEC. And then over this past week, you know, we heard, hey, Kometo said, hey, it's done. We didn't make it in. I'm devastated. I'm sad. I'm crushed. Nobody's more upset than me, whatever. Uh, and then the very next week, hey, all of a sudden we get some Hansama news. I don't think that that is a coincidence. I do think that Hansama probably really, really, really wanted to go to K-Corp. He's French. They're the French org. They are, you know, I'm sure they were going to give him a good offer uh, and all of these things. But where he does end up going is, of course, G2. And I know some people are going to have some mixed opinions about this. Obviously, Hansama is a little bit controversial right now in the sense that he has had a very, very storied European career. You know, you got to remember that in 2021 at Worlds, he like absolutely backpacked his rogue team. I think they ended up going like one in five at Worlds or something like that. But it was literally Hansama going like 1v9, just trying to carry games, even against some of the better bot lanes and, and some of the better teams in the world. Uh, and he really looked on top of the world. And Han Sama throughout most of his career has been pretty strong. He's been one of the better 80 carries in the LEC. And 80 carry in the LEC is not really weak. You know, the, Europe usually has a couple 80 carries that are really strong internationally. You know, this year they had comp uh, and upset, I think is pretty dang good as well. They've had reckless in the past. Perks has been like an okay 80 carry internationally before. Um, they, they have all of these different names. Um, and Han Sama has been right there with a lot of these guys. But... 
obviously coming into 2022 with Team Liquid, this year was really a disaster in a lot of ways. Hansama, uh, you know, I watch a lot of LCS. I watch most of the big LCS matches, most of the LCS matches, period, but especially most of the big games, which Team Liquid was often in. And there's just not really a lot of standout moments for Hansama this past year. You know, like what's a really, really big moment that Hansama had in a big game or a big match or a big play or anything like that? You know, I can't really remember all that many of them. Team Liquid won a decent amount of games, not always in the biggest moments, not always in the playoffs, but throughout the regular season in both years and or in both splits and all that stuff, Team Liquid won a lot of games. Um, but overall, they were never really flashy. They were never really exciting. Hansama was never really like in his bag or popping off or carrying or anything like that. And he had a pretty, uh, you know, at least star-studded team around him. I don't really know how well they all performed this year. Core JJ, you know, how good is he really? Bjergsen, how good was he after a break? Um, Santorin was, was, I think, overall pretty consistent and pretty good. But um, I don't think he was, like, insane levels or anything like that. And Blippo was just as hit and miss as, as anybody else at times. So, um, coming back to Europe. And not only coming back to Europe, coming back to G. Two, uh, coming back to Europe to G2 is very, very interesting because obviously G2 fans have very high expectations. They're the team that uh, has won a international title in the modern League of Legends era with their MSI title. They've made it to World Finals. They've made it to World Semis very, very recently. Their goals and aspirations are very high, especially, you know, Caps. He's not getting any younger. He's not, you know, going to have the prime of his career go on forever. Um, they have some good players on their team, guys like Targamas, who looks very, very promising and is also, um, you know, a friend support to pair up with Hansama. You have BB, who's looking like one of the better top laners in Europe. I still don't think BB has been super insane internationally just yet at this point in his career, but he's at least has talent and potential. Um, and G2 has a jungle spot open that we don't know exactly what they're going to be doing with. But I could see if you're a G2 fan or a European fan, if you're just like, dang, how good is Hansama going to be? Is he going to return to his old form? Is coming back to Europe going to help him be at home? And is Europe just a better league and better solo queue and better everything? And he's going to pop off and come back and be amazing. Is he maybe on the downward descent of his career? Did he get exposed in NA? Was he just not that good anymore? You know, you know, we see players go over the hump sometimes and never really be able to regain their old form. Uh, is he missing some kind of confidence? Is he having some kind of issues? Who knows? Uh, but also at the same time, Hansama is a very, very big name uh, and it's a big pickup for G2. And I, I do think that regardless of what form we get, I think he was better than Flockhead in, in 2022 and I expect him to be better than Flockhead in 2023 as well. So at the very least, it is an upgrade there uh, and a guy with a, a decent brand decent popularity and you know guy who seems like he's a good teammate and can probably pair up where pair up well with Targamas but also at the same time there's going to be some G2 fans that are like damn we should have way waited for upset or went harder for upset or we should have went for Viper or yada 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 and I don't know if, I think Viper is about to be a free agent I'm not exactly sure maybe he's not but in the case of a guy like upset or even some of these other AD carries that people would maybe want them to go after um there is buyouts involved you know upset is still with Fnatic he's not a free agent uh, even guys like Reckless they're not going to be free agents not that Reckless would go after G2, or G2 would go after Reckless or whatever at this point. Um, but one thing about Hansama is that he was released from Team Liquid. He was available. They're able to pick him up with no buyout. So he's also significantly cheaper um, than some of these players that they would have to pay a buyout for as well. That's definitely a buy low ish moment on Hansama. Yes, Hansama definitely had a lot of interest. And that's the other thing that's kind of interesting from this whole situation. Wulu does tweet out Hansama had interest from many teams, including Mad Lions, SK, BDS, and KC, which shows that, hey, maybe all these teams aren't exactly in love with their AD carry and maybe are even going to be moving on from their AD carry in this offseason. Um, you know, none of those are too spicy except Mad Lions maybe moving on from Unforgiven potentially. But he does say in the end, the decision came down to Vitality. Fnatic and G2, which does mean that, hey, Vitality and Fnatic were in this sweepstakes and they were also looking for an AD carry as well, which does mean, hey, Karzy is probably out, probably on the go. And Vitality's going to be looking for a new AD carry. Is that going to be upset? Is that going to be one of these other guys that's going around reckless? You know, I don't know. And then also Fnatic. That's pretty spicy because if, if, you know, if upset wasn't leaving, I don't think Fnatic would be making calls looking at other AD carries, especially a guy like Hansama coming off the year he had. So all of a sudden it's seeming like upset might be on the move and might be available as well. But it does seem like, hey, there was all kinds of teams interested in Hansama. So the market was very, very healthy for him. And that definitely worked to his advantage. But... Like we said, uh, you know, there, there were plenty of people that were like a little bit upset with this because, um, or, you know, like half joking, but also a little bit upset. Uh, Inspired tweeted out Hans Mama is back home and Wulu says you next. Does that mean something's going on with Inspired? I don't know. And then also Oduamna said took his sweet time, didn't he? Um, which is, you know, people hinting at, hey, the fact that this Hans Mama decision took so long definitely did back up the rest of the market. But now that this decision has been made, maybe it's time to open up the floodgates. Maybe we're going to get lots of big news very, very soon. 
I know that's certainly what I'm hoping for. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Uh, hopefully, I catch you guys in the next one. Check out Prize Picks, first link in the description below. Uh, but until next time, peace.